Nick, I've been recently interested in the arts from a, uh, an intellectual point of view. Okay. I've loved music my whole life. My wife's a classical uh, concert pianist, so it's been part of my life. But I've never really studied the arts. And I've always had a framework for everything I've thought about in life is epistemology. How do we know things? What is the process of knowing? So I want you to help me to, to apply epistemology and art. And so let's start by saying, from, from an epistemological standpoint, what, how, how can that way of thinking help us to discern the nature of art? So I think first, uh, be, before that can happen, we have to adopt a somewhat more expansive understanding of epistemology than has been traditional in the uh, Anglophone analytic tradition. Okay. Epistemology for the last 50 years at least has been highly focused on belief and on under what conditions beliefs are justified, warranted, entitled, and so forth. Okay. So the epistemology of beliefs. In, in the modern West, in the 17th and 18th century, well, they didn't really call themselves epistemologists yet, okay. but what we would call epistemology focused at least as much on perception oh. and memory. Mm -hmm. Focused much more on memory, actually, than, than until maybe 20 years ago, mm, for, for some too. reason. Thomas Reed, the 18th century Scots philosopher, talked about memory and testimony and so forth. It just fell out of yeah. the discipline until, as I say, about 20 years right. ago. So when you think more expansively about knowing, understanding, grasping, and so forth, then, then, then epistemology uh, opens up and then it begins to give us some insight into how the arts work. I mean, if you're going to talk about perception, yeah, sure. And uh, then a crucial part of it is going to be how we perceive works of art, mm -hmm. how and why we perceive them as representational rather than just two-dimensional mm -hmm. designs mm -hmm. and so forth. This becomes a really mm -hmm. interesting question. Memory, a crucial part of listening to music, is <laughs> is remembering what what came before, right? right? right. Um, and the expectation of what comes next. And the expectations of what's going to come next. Right, right. So with the, this more expansive view of e view practice of epistemology that's emerging, the intersection between epistemology and the arts becomes far more obvious and fruitful to explore than it's been if you just focus on under what okay. conditions are <laughs> beliefs justified. <laughs> right. Okay, that, that makes sense. And so what epistemology then can do is it can highlight the kinds of questions we should ask. Because the first question about perception, why you see 3D on a two-dimensional, yeah. are, are, are questions that can be put to cognitive scientists or neuroscientists to study and uh, undoubtedly give us answers after yep. some period of time. Yep. So what are, I mean, that, that's a good way to so what are some of the questions that the, an expansive view of epistemology can ask. We can ask about the nature of perception. What are the kinds of questions? We can ask about the nature of perception. We can ask about, so I think understanding is a more expansive concept than knowledge, okay. with, without going into okay. detail about it now. We can ask how art achieve, how, how by engaging works of art, sometimes under some conditions, our understanding is enhanced. Mm. That's a harder question than the, 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 the psychology of perception, I would think. That's a, though the psychology of perception turns out to be fairly complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Anything goes on but, in here But is I mean, it, in the arts, you've not, you, then you've not just got the psychology of perception at work, but you've also got this, yes, okay, so I perceive the design and so forth. Now, how does that, how does it, right. how does that work mm -hmm. to enhance my understanding? Yeah. And, and understanding is a broader concept. It's not just understanding of the art. It could be understanding what the art is trying to project yes. about some other world or exactly. some other thing. Exactly. Right? So, so it's a complicated exactly. uh, kind of thing. Exactly. Is so I think it becomes a, a fruitful expansion of, of a field. So the model, the traditional model for epistemology, I suppose, has been double perception, uh, uh. the traditional focus, perception and the sort of knowledge that we get from science, those yeah. two sorts of things. Right. Yeah. But now, this broadening <laughs> yeah, yeah. is so happily occurring. Now, that brings up the natural question um, that just pops out now. 
that means, in essence, that I ask the question, does, how does epistemological thinking, which I had sort of a, a rigidity into the normal <laughs> thing, a rigidity to understand how it works in the arts, but what you're showing is that this enhanced view of perception, and so can the arts then, the existence of the arts, analytic, actually help our expanding view of epistemology? I mean, so the, the arrow of causation, or, or explanat the explanatory arrow was now going in the opposite direction. Right. So it seems to me if one wants to start reflecting yeah. seriously as an epistemologist about memory, which as I say Thomas Reed did in the 18th century mm -hmm. and then nobody, basically yeah. nobody did until 20, 25 years ago, then it seems to me a natural subtopic is going to be how do, how do arts, how do the arts shape memory? Yeah. And when you ask that question then the, then, it's in, then the how is something to be talked about, but that mm. they do shape individual and cultural memory right. is, is obvious. So. Yeah, there's, there's no question. I mean, the, the, the question is how uh, you, you see the affect of art uh, making memories more powerful. If you, you remember different times you heard music at a concert. Right. Uh, I mean, I have you know, specific recollections where I can see everything. Uh, those times that had a big emotional impact on me. Right. And art does that m right. more than anything else. Right, and then perception. So the standard, the standard situation that modern epistemologists uh, had in mind when they talked about perception was perceiving, perceiving a chair, perceiving mm -hmm. a cat, perceiving right. a dog, yeah. or something like that. But when, when you expand it and you include the arts, then you've got this more subtle phenomenon of not only do we gain knowledge about the world by looking at the cat, yeah. we can also gain knowledge of the world by seeing a, a portrait of the cat and so forth. Mm. And that's more complicated, more subtle, and so forth. And but, that, but it's clearly a way in which we gain knowledge. And it, it, it will have an, a, a different kind of valence to it, a different affect, a different emotion, depends upon how the artist is dealing with that knowledge. Yeah, yeah. It will be, it will be yeah. substantially different at that yeah. point. And so, uh, how important do you think this nexus is between uh, epistemology and art? Is it something that is uh, something trivial you and I are talking about, or is there something deeper here? No, I think it's, I think it's not at all trivial. Um, so, beginning in the 18th century, there were substantial changes in the arts, and thinking about the arts sort of tied right along with those different changes. And we began to focus on beauty and aesthetic qualities and so forth, in a way in which traditional writing when Aristotle talked about poetry, he didn't mm. focus on aesthetic qualities mm -hmm. or beauty and so forth. So with a more expansive understanding of art, art clearly, lots of works of art, not all of them, present the world in a certain way. And the world can, may be that way or it may not be that way. And so art may block <laughs> understanding or may enhance understanding, may confirm understanding. <laughs> so, so the intersection then between how we gain understanding and what happens in the arts is not a sort of a manufactured intersection, but jumps out at you. I mean, all of us have had the experience of, um, of our understanding of whatever. Episodes in the history of Judaism, of Christianity, being shaped by the, by the visual art, by the sculpture, um, music shaping our understanding. Um, so, so the intersection jumps out. <laughs>